Okay, in this video we're going to discuss worksheet 23. And in worksheet 23 it goes with handout 23, which was reviewing concepts from general chemistry's redox reactions. And so a lot of these questions you won't be that um, new or challenging. But then I'm going to practice two more balancing reactions that are um, balancing the redox reactions in acidic solutions. So we're starting with definitions. Reduction is a gain of electrons, right? And here I still have to write my Leo says Ger, right? This is lose electrons is oxidation. And this is gains electrons is a reduction and some other professors might have taught you there's oil rig and there's a few other um acronyms you can use what is the oxidation number for the sulfur in sulfuric acid so i like to space it out a little bit if i have the opportunity this is a negative two, you follow the rules, right? So oxygen is usually negative two unless it's peroxide, but peroxide is very unique, and this is not peroxide. And so that's a negative eight, right? Because there's four of them. But the redox number is this one, the negative two, not the negative eight. You calculate the oxidation number for individual atoms. Hydrogen is positive one, but there's two of them, so it's plus two. So this must equal zero because there's no overall charge. So sulfur must be plus six as there is only one. So the answer is plus six is the oxidation number of the sulfur. Which of these equations does not represent an oxidation reduction reaction? Now, I put this in as a multiple choice, but it's meant for you to practice also calculating oxidation numbers because you need to see if the oxidation numbers change or stay the same, and that's how you could tell if it's a redox reaction. So in this first one, aluminum is a pure element, it's zero. Chlorine is a halogen, usually negative one. Hydrogen is with a non-metal, so it's positive one. This is pure hydrogen, so it's zero. This is negative one halogen, right? And this is a positive three because there's three of these which equal negative three it needs to equal zero so this must be positive three so is this a redox reaction aluminum goes from zero to plus three i don't even have to look at anything else this is a redox water negative two plus one right with a non-metal and then pure hydrogen is zero, pure oxygen is zero, hydrogen is changing from plus one to zero. This is also a redox reaction. Let's look at this reaction. Um, sodium is always plus one, chlorine is negative one, if it's with anyone but oxygen, right? Um, within here, this lead is a plus two, this oxygen is a negative two, that's um, let me think about that. <clears throat> well, this is plus two. This is going to be three, two, five. Okay. And then this is negative one. This is a plus two. This is negative two. Mm -hmm. This is five and this is positive one. So sodium is plus one here, plus one. Chloride is negative one, negative one. Lead is plus two, plus two. Nitrogen is plus five, plus five. Oxygen is negative two, negative two. This is not redox. In fact, if you look closer, you know exactly what this is. This is a double displacement reaction. Or a precipitation reaction. Okay, assign oxidation number to the reagents and the products. And identify the oxidizing and the reducing agent. So again, oxygen is usually negative two. There's eight of them, so that's negative 16. This has an overall charge of negative two. 
That means that my sulfur must add up to 14, and there's two of them, so each sulfur is plus 7. This pure zinc is 0. This zinc is plus 2 because it has a charge here. Negative 2 for oxygen. There's two of them. That's negative 8. The negative 2 is the overall charge, so this must be a plus 6. There's one sulfur. That sulfur is plus 6. Again, I do not mess with coefficients at this point. We're just looking at the individual atoms. Sulfur goes from plus 7 to plus 6, right? If the number decreases, it gains electrons. So that's reduction. So that's the sulfur in S2O8. Right, that sulfur gains electrons. So it's the reduction that makes it the oxidizing agent. Zinc goes from 0 to plus 2, lose electrons as oxidation. That's what exactly what zinc does. It becomes more positive. So it lost electrons. And whoever's oxidized is the reducing agent. Okay. So this is what's expected, right? Each one of these numbers would have a point value. And on Chem 101, the way that it was arranged, right, you have to selectively decide what's the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. So this back work, right, is what is required for you to get to this point. Okay, let's get to balancing. Balance the following oxidation reduction reaction in acidic solution. Okay, so again, if you're struggling with identifying the half reactions, you can just separate them by what looks like they're related. Um, first, I'm going to go ahead and do the, the redox numbers, the oxidation numbers first. Copper is a pure copper, so it's zero. This oxygen is negative two. There's three of them, that's negative six. It equals negative one because there's an overall charge. So this nitrogen is a plus five. This is a negative two. This oxygen is a negative two, so this must be a positive two. There's no overall charge, it has to equal zero. And this copper already has a charge, so the oxidation number equals that charge. Now I'm gonna look at what happens. Copper goes from 0 to plus 2, okay? If it becomes more positive, that means it loses electrons. And again, you can kind of verify because copper and copper should stay in the same half reaction and this nitrogen should stay in the same half reaction. So I'm going to write copper solid, right, to copper plus two and I already figured out that two electrons um, are lost right lose electrons two the number of coppers are balanced and there's two electrons here so this reaction is pretty much set okay um, I don't have to do anything else to this. There's no oxygens to balance, there's no hydrogens to balance. So I'm gonna to move to the next set. Nitrogen goes from five to plus two. So that means that NO3, right, to NO gas. So when I look at this, right, the nitrogen gains three electrons, sorry, from here to here, gains three electrons. So I'm gonna put it right in here. The nitrate, the nitrate plus three electrons produces your NO. Now I need to look at what else needs to be balanced here because I do have oxygens here. So on this side, there's three oxygens. I only have one here, so I'm gonna add two waters to this side. That makes it two and one three, and that matches the three. But with doing that, I've added four hydrogens, so I'm gonna add 
four hydrogens to that side. Okay, so um, I think from, yep, this is balanced right now. Okay, now I need to find a common multiple, right? The least common multiple because this number, two electrons here and three electrons here need to match because whatever's produced is what's going to be gained. So if I cross multiply and I multiply this by three and this by two, right? Actually, I might just line them up so I can add them here in a sec. And let me do one thing at a time, right? So multiplying this by three gives you three coppers, producing three copper ions and six electrons. And I'm gonna take this reaction and multiply it by two so that I have six electrons also, but then I'm gonna have two protons and two nitrates and six electrons produce two nitrate two nitrous oxides and four waters i'm going to add up these reactions now notice right these electrons and these electrons cancel each other this is a reagent that's a product and I'm gonna start writing um, whatever's in the reagent side and then I'll switch over to the product side. So there's three coppers, there's no copper anywhere else. So I'm gonna write three copper solids and that's the end of the reagents here. I'm gonna look down here, so I already wrote this. I'm gonna look at two hydrogen ions. There's no more hydrogen ions. I wrote it down, now two nitrates. As I go, I cancel so I keep track of what I'm doing. If that doesn't help work for you, don't have to do it. Um, now I'm going to go to the product size and I have three copper ions, two nitrous oxides, and so I wrote that, I wrote that, and I'm down to four waters. Okay, so this right here is my balanced redox reaction. Oh, I just picked up an error here. Sorry, so this is supposed to be four hydrogens, so there should have been a four here. And when I multiply that by two, this should be eight. So let me just quick verify that everything else is set up correctly. Three, two, six, eight, three, two, four, yep. That was just the only one. Um, there should be an eight there. that kind of thing you just need to go back and check them because with so many numbers in these problems that's happened that happens quite a bit in fact every time i've done a video i find an error on my key so i it's good because you have to kind of look them over a few times and make sure that you you get it right now be very cautious this is one moment where maybe looking at the PDF of the Chem 101 worksheet before you start the Chem 101 worksheet would help. Print, at least write down the problem that you need to balance. There's only one problem to balance. Write it down, balance it all out, and then try to plug it into Chem 101. If Chem 101 gives you, like you forget an AQ or you do a charge thing, just send me a picture of what you worked out and we can discuss if there's an error and then you can post it or, or, or you can get credit back for it. Okay, now let's do the last one. And so sorry if there's a lag time, but I do need to make sure that I, I check the answer with my key before I, I move on to the next problem. Um, just because it's it's one of those things it's just easy to to forget something as i'm talking and and working out especially since i'm talking 
I don't usually talk when I'm doing balancing these reactions, so um, there's a, a greater likelihood for, for a number to be left out here or there. Okay, so now I have a zinc and zinc hydroxide, and then I have a nitrate and an ammonia. Now, if you're asking me, right, I see that these two are related and these two are related. So if I'm gonna separate half reactions, I would put these two together and these two on a separate reaction, right? So use that piece, that, that idea when you're looking at this. But I'm gonna assign the, the oxidation numbers here. Zinc is pure zinc, it's negative, it's zero. Oxygen here is negative two. There's six and it equals negative one because there's an overall charge. So that means this nitrogen is a plus five. In this case here, right, I have uh, zinc is a positive two. Hydrogen is positive one, right? And then the oxygen is usually negative two. So I did this part first because hydrogen is, when I was calculating it, right? I kind of was looking at my key right now. Sorry about that. So when I was calculating this, what I usually do is because I know hydroxide, oxygen is always negative two and this is positive one, right? I keep that tally. So that's a total of negative one and there's four of them, right? So this needs to be negative two. So that's where I get that the zinc has to be a positive two. Then I'm going to ammonia, which is NH3. So again, I know ammonia needs to be positive, hydrogen needs to be positive one, and then um, this positive three equals zero, so my ammonium, my nitrogen must be a positive three. So that's how I did this part. So now I'm gonna look at zinc here and zinc here. It went from zero to plus two, right? Because the number gets more positive, that means it lost electrons. So I'm going to write that zinc produces zinc hydroxide. And it releases how many? Two, right? Loses two electrons. Okay. Now again, you could do all that separately if you find that it's easier for you to separate the half reactions first. Now that I'm here, I'm going to keep going with this, right? Zinc and zinc are balanced. I have my number of electrons. Now I need to balance the oxygens and the hydrogens. This has four oxygens, so I'm going to add water to this side. I'm going to rewrite it just so that I have a little more room. Um, four waters and the zinc. And um, I also need to figure out the hydrogen. So this is four water, that's eight protons, right? Eight hydrogens. I can make a little note here. And then on this side, I have four hydrogens. So I need four more hydrogens on this side. Okay, and I just did that. So I balanced my oxygens, I balanced my hydrogens, I have my electrons, and I balance my zinc. So here we go, a Q, a Q, okay. Now, <clears throat> this reaction is balanced. I'm gonna move on to the other reaction. NO3 and NH3. And in this process, it goes from five to three, so it's gaining electrons, it gains two electrons, okay, in doing this. And now I wanna balance the hydrogens and the oxygen. I'm gonna start with oxygens, this side has none, this has three, so I'm gonna add three waters to this side. And now I have three hydrogens here, and six hydrogens here, so that's nine. So six, seven, eight, nine, I'm gonna add nine hydrogens on this side. 
That's all I need to do to balance, okay? And there's one nitrogen of each. So now, this goes, oh, I made a mistake up here. Okay, so when I'm doing the plus one, this is three, this is plus three, right? So this number needs to be negative three, negative three. So this goes from five to negative three. So that means that eight electrons are gained. See, that's why you need to take this step by step, right? Okay. And just a little difference like that would have bigger repercussions later on. So just be very cautious, check your numbers. Um, and again, send me emails if you get stuck, if you want me to check something, if you want to discuss it before putting it into school, into Chem 101, any of that, okay? I get that these problems have, are more error prone to say the least. Okay, so now that I have a balanced um, reduction and a balanced oxidation, I'm gonna put these two together, but I wanna find the common, the least common multiple. This has eight electrons, this has two. Okay, so if I multiply this reaction by four, I should get eight electrons. So by four, it's 16 waters, four zinc solids, four zinc hydroxide, eight electrons, and 16 protons. And then this guy, I don't need to do anything to it, but I'm gonna rewrite it so that I can have it nice and organized. And now I'm gonna add these two reactions up. Now remember redundancy. So I'm gonna keep my eye on this middle reaction. I'm gonna do the reagents first and then the products. But as I'm checking, I'm gonna start with this 16 waters. I'm gonna look if there's water anywhere else and there's water here, okay? So this is produced, this is gained. So this is in at 13. Remember, I can't get negative numbers. You never see minus, right, a reagent or a product. So these 16, you'd subtract the three, so you get 13 waters for zinc. Then you're done with reagents here. I'm gonna move down here. I'm gonna look for protons. There are protons here. So these um, protons, you want seven protons on this side. So there's no more here. Electrons get canceled out and I'm left with a nitrate. I'm gonna look on this side. I have the four zinc hydroxides, the seven protons left on this side, and an H3 gas. So this is the balanced reaction, okay? I hope this helps. And again, you have plenty of resources. Let me know if you need me to look over your redox reaction before you plug it into Chem 101. Um, you're gonna see the one in Chem 101 is, is, is wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So um, just keep an eye on that and um, take your time with this problem, okay? I think that's the end. Yep, that's the end of the worksheet. So if you have any other questions, please contact me and I'll see you in the next video.